Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are running through this small three-game slate on Tuesday night tonight, y'all. Uh, in this one, we are going to go ahead and look at the Knicks visiting the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs on zero days rest. We'll take a look at that one here. Some player props as well in there. Nate's got his great article up on playpicks.com with those best bets and player props as well for you. And make sure to like and subscribe to the page as we've got a couple of other videos up for you today, including a gift card opportunity in one of our other videos for you. So you need to be eligible to, to in order to be eligible to that, need to be liked and subscribed to the page. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, Head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find those listings in your area. Nate, let's get into the lines for tonight. Yeah, we're looking at Knicks minus two at Spurs in this game. In the totals, been around 211, saw a dip one point, back up to 211 and a half now. Uh, the other games on the slate, we got Mets now minus four at the Mavericks with a total of 218. That's risen a little bit. Under seems a little exploitable. And the spread as it stands is still exploitable if you think Luka Doncic might sit. Uh, we talk about all that in that separate episode. And then the last game of the night should be entertaining. Celtics plus two at Lakers with a total that's risen from 216 to 220. Uh, and just looking at this Knicks game, though, I, I'm i trying not to get too involved in the numbers because the Spurs, I feel like I've seen this before where they just – they go through a stretch where they just look awful, uh, where they just don't have much talent. And you're like, oh, how can Popovich squeeze the juice out of this roster? And then sure enough, they start playing like one of the best teams in the league and they've covered in five of their last six, uh, including against the Suns, including beating the Warriors, holding those two best teams in basketball under 108 points. Uh, their defense, which has been awful at home, uh, in previously has just turned it around regardless of where they're playing. And you look at their last two home games, uh, they pretty much shut down the Celtics and Wizards. They went over by half a point in that Wizards game, but went way under against the Celtics. Uh, I'm thinking that they're going to be able to contain this Knicks offense. <clears throat> First and foremost, a Knicks offense that's pretty predictable at this point, pretty limited. Uh, and they know it. That's why they 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 made the tough decision eventually to bench Kemba Walker. Uh, it's just not the same as last season, I guess. Julius Randle's splits are down across the board. Uh, Derrick Rose is they're trying to ease him into the season. You know, it's a full eighty-two game season. They can't use him that often, but their their offense is not really unlocked without him, without somebody to get to the rim. And the Spurs just they know how to limit guys who are somewhat one-dimensional, like even Rose. I think they'd be able to keep him out of the paint. I think they know how to defend Randall. Uh, and I'm not that worried about the back-to-back for such a young team, such a relatively deep team. Aside from DeJounte Murray, they have a lot of guys that can do different things. Uh, so I would, I mean, I, I don't understand why they're underdogs here, considering how well they've played and how this, the Knicks, they've handled some business against, you know, below average Eastern Conference teams, but they are, they haven't, covered in five of their last six against the West. Um, and there's, they've gone under in six of their last seven on the road. I'm looking at an under and a Spurs win here. If you want to combine those results, that's fine. But I think as long as you're getting plus money on the money line for the Spurs at home, I'm not that worried about the back to back. I would just take the home team. Yeah. You know, I'm struggling with this one more than I feel like I normally do when I take a look at a Knicks, uh, you know, game and, and the lines available there. I feel like I have a pretty good feel for that. And this one, you know, I'm honestly really just trying to ride the numbers and, and go a little bit in the other direction of you with that total and look at the over. Um, and the reason is just really the difference, you know, the splits for these two teams, the Knicks on the road, um, you know, they score more points. Uh, they give up more points. They play at a little faster pace. Um, you know, and, and I, I think that's, that's a huge part of all of this. And it's the same concept for the Spurs at home, um, you know, it, it, over the, the sample size of the season, right. The, the Spurs at home, um, they score, they score 113 points at home and give up 111. Whereas on the road, uh, you, you take a lot away from those numbers, uh, and they give up, uh, you know, about 104 on the road rather and score 106 
So there's a huge dip in their scoring and a huge increase in the, in the amount of points that they give up when they're, you know, when they're at home, which is interesting, especially on the defensive side. But, um, you know, like you said, the, the, the conflicting information here is just a little bit more of a recent sample size where, you know, against the Celtics and Wizards, they, they were able to lock them both up to under 100, kept the Celtics to 88 points that night. Um, you know, but they they also gave up, uh, you know, 124 to the Hawks at home that the previous meeting, what they've done on the road recently against really good offenses like Golden State, Port, uh, Phoenix and even Portland, if you want to talk about a, a, at least a good offense, um, you know, say what you want about Portland on defense, but they, they still held th- those teams, um, you know, to, to uh, under as well. Uh, in those victories, except for Phoenix, obviously, which they were unable to pull out last night by three points. Um, so, you know, they're, they're doing well on the road on defense, which is what they're supposed to do, but it's not quite the same at home. And I, I think the same can be said for the Knicks, who score more points on uh, on the road and give up more points. So to me, it's really just this is a you're getting value with with a, a spread that's still at around two ten and a half. Um, Because I could see this game being about 109, 110 to 107 in that range um, and and, and a little bit lack of defense compared to what we've recently seen from these teams. You look at what they both do. Um, you know, it, it, uh, conversely, uh, each other, like basically they're, they're not a good matchup all over the place for each other. They all, they both do things well, dif- different things well and different things poorly. Um, and I think that's, that's the recipe for offense, right? In terms of, um, you know, the, the Knicks uh, scoring uh, a lot of their points in the paint. The Spurs have been better as of late in their defense against the paint as well, which is something to see. Um, but also, you know, that, that opponent three point percentage for both of these teams, um, not very good. And they both do score in the top half, at least in terms of percentage points off of three. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for that to, to be the case tonight for, for yes, Julius Randle. There's a lot of ways that you can stop the Knicks, um, but there are at least at this year, you know, four or five shooters on the wing um, that can put up those threes. And, and that's where I would expect them to get a bunch of points tonight as well. Um, and so I would start with that total. Um, before I went anywhere else. And and yeah, I do feel good about the Spurs getting points here. So I might even just tease that, tease those Spurs up to about six and a half. I don't think the Knicks have it in them to blow them out in, in San Antonio tonight. Um, but six, six and a half, you know, for, uh, for San Antonio. And then you talk about an over of about two Oh six and a half. Um, that's where I would feel really good about this one before I, you know, it just started taking straight lines as they're, as they're given to me. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I don't think that the total is my preferred direction just because this, shift in the in the Spurs style of play is so new. Um, I, I just would throw some caution on assuming that they're going to continue to struggle defensively at home when they've been fantastic defensively everywhere recently. Um, recently. I, I, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and, and 211 is not an exploitable number really in either direction. Um, you do, to your point though, yeah, you look at their last two home meetings with the Knicks and they've scored 120 and 119. Um, both those over both the meetings in New York went under. Um, so there, there is a bit more offense that's to be found uh, down at at and center. It seems when these teams meet up, uh, but yeah, I, I just think would, would try to ride the positive play from the Spurs. If betting this game, I definitely don't trust the Knicks recent turnaround. Uh, I don't think that they've had challenges to this degree in that, in that stretch. Um, and I mean, the one challenge they had against the Nets came up a little bit short. And for them to be favored in this spot just doesn't make yeah. sense to me. I think the, the spread should really be flipped. So if you can just get plus money on the home team, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at too. You know, the, the most recent trends, rather than looking at the total for the recent, or, you know, looking at the recent trends for the total, I'm looking at the recent trends for for San Antonio being able to handle this. I agree that that spread seems incorrect, um, and that's where you find the value more than anything. I, I still like getting a few extra points from the Spurs, um, you know, and and a few extra points on that total combined to to feel good about that game, um, you know. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just ride the numbers here in terms of that that total and feel good about the fact that when these teams are, you know, in this when the Spurs are at home and the Knicks are on the road talking points, it, vice versa, talking unders. Uh, so I think tonight that the total is, is what, what I'll go ahead and tease up with, with the Spurs and feel good about that. So that is all the time that we have for today. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Got a gift card opportunity up in that Boston Celtics Lakers video for you. Need to be liked and subscribed to be eligible. And until we see you next, happy betting.